Hey everybody, it's Mecca here. Hope you're doing well. I am coming to you from Monterey. Nice and foggy here on the trail. A little mist is falling from the heavens, but in today's video, I wanna walk you through when I believe, just my opinions here, I believe you should be using um, one of the systems that come with uh, Land Rovers and Range Rovers, the um, Terrain Progress Control System, Crawl Control, um, I think really those are the only two names, Off-Road Cruise Control. So let me show you where I'm at, what the train is, and then I'm gonna take you inside the Range Rover and I'm gonna show you how to basically set it up and why you might wanna be using it in these types of scenarios. So we're out here on the trail and you see it's, it's I don't know what type of rocks that is, but it's, you know, it's a little rocky. We got uh, nothing too extreme, but what I'm just concerned of is of course, um, you know, anything sharper than a circle um, for those 21 inch tires. Um, and so I'm gonna give you a scenario is, here's where you might wanna focus purely on steering so you can manage where your wheels are gonna go and not so much on throttle and control and stuff like that. So you can kinda see where we're at. And let's go inside the vehicle now. Okay, so I am in the vehicle now and we'll just go to off-road off -road information here, or drive assist rather. Um, so we're using the cameras to check where our wheels are at. Okay, now um, I'm just gonna keep it in auto for this type of terrain here. It's, well, it's, it's nothing too difficult. I've done this in my Mazda. Um, but for the purpose of today's video, let's pretend we have sensitive tires on. So what you're gonna do first is hit the all terrain progress control button. And then you see it says select a gear, ATPC is ready. So then we're just gonna select a gear, um, but then we wanna shift that this over into sport mode so we have manual shifting. Um, and then we simply, you can see that gauge over here, by hitting the cruise control buttons, we can increase our, our speed or decrease the speed um, based on where that little arrow that you see moving right there. So let's go super slow for right now. And then all I'm gonna do right now is I'm simply going to, let me zoom out. I'm gonna take my foot off the brake and um, you'll see what happens. Engine revving up and we go. And so this allows me to purely focus on driving or steering rather. It's not really driving anymore, is it? And I believe, so it is telling me, you can see right down there, it's it's gone. It's telling me low range is recommended. Um, we're not really gonna do that. We're not putting too much stress on the transmission right now. Now let's see if we can go a little slower by hitting the minus button. And I cannot go any slower than this. So this looks like it's keeping me at about three, four kilometers an hour. So I wonder, yeah, so we got a flat ground here. This is gonna be a good test. So I wonder if I go into low range, if it's gonna keep me closer to one or two kilometers an hour. So right now, three, four. Okay, so I'm gonna put my foot on the brake, come to a stop and uh, go to neutral and select low range. Whoa, dizziness. So low range is selected. I'm gonna choose my gear again, go into standard uh, or s sport one. Now, you notice I was actually in access height as I did that. When I put it into low range, it automatically raised me up into off-road mode um, or off-road height rather. And uh, so let me take my foot off the brake and see if we go slower than four kilometers an hour. Ah, look at that. And now, to be fair, I'm gonna just go into S. No, I cannot just go into S. So I'll put it over to D. But yeah, look at that, look at that. So low range, it's now keeping your all terrain progress control down to one kilometer an hour. Don't know what that is for you American folks. But isn't that cool? So it's a much, much slower setting when in low range. 
course. Those of you who know the technical reason why, feel free to hit me up in the comments. But isn't that cool? Now, to increase it a little bit here, we're gonna bump it up a little bit. You, you can hear it revving a little. If you hear a little squeaking, don't mind those. Those are, those are just my sway bar bushings that I've worn out for the third or fourth time. I can't keep up with them. But isn't this cool? So no feet. So isn't that cool? You can see what the diffs are doing over on the screen here. But so this is the scenario when using all-terrain progress control is great. I'm just gonna come to a stop here because I wanna talk to you about some other things really quick, put it in park. There's a few scenarios where you definitely don't wanna be using all-terrain progress control. Um, one of them is when you're going to be going from different speeds. So for example, if you're gonna be lifting a wheel up in the air, all-terrain progress control is not the mode you wanna be or not one of the settings you wanna have on at that point because you're gonna be doing weight transfer. And what this system is gonna be doing is you're gonna keep the vehicle at a constant speed and that's all it's trying to do. It's not determining whether or not there's gonna be a wheel up in the air, it's just keeping all the wheels moving at the exact same speed. When you, and I think I have a video of, of me doing this in the Range Rover, when you start getting that cross axle articulation and you have to transfer weight, you actually probably want to be slowing down a little bit than when you were when you started lifting up that wheel. Ultra in progress control won't allow you to do that and that's where you can end up breaking things um, because you're just relying solely on the system. So the best way to think about this system is it's not going to know or determine what might be coming up. It's just going at a set speed. And uh, so you think about it when you see the terrain, you know, um, hey, okay, I'm gonna be proactive. I'm gonna start letting off the gas a little bit because we're gonna be transferring some weight. Where this system's not gonna be doing that. It's more of a reactive system. It's gonna keep going. It's gonna sense, hey, that wheel's getting more spin. We're gonna break it down a little bit, but it's keeping the other wheels at that same speed. And then it's not gonna keep into account, hopefully this is making sense. It's not gonna keep into account that it's about to drop a whole bunch of weight onto that wheel because it's being lifted up in the air. I don't know if that made sense. I, I honestly, I don't know if that made sense. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this little prompt video. I'm gonna do my best to get some more filming now that I'm down here in Mexico and caught up on a few things. Hope you all doing well. Let me know in the comments what you thought and more importantly, what you are driving hard. Till next time, everybody.